your world changed over the course of the last year? I mean, what's been different for you at Twilio? Um, what have you all learned from this pandemic? I mean, your business is obviously doing incredibly well and uh, we continue to be a huge supporter uh, and customer of Twilio, but tell us what you've learned in the last year. You know, it's interesting. I think as empathetic leaders, you know, we like to think that we're good at listening. We're good at understanding the needs of, of our teams. And we're here to lead, you know, lead from the front, but also to, um, uh, you know, to really be supportive of our teams. And like, we see our goal, our job as enabling our, our employees and our teams to be successful. Yet, I think when the pandemic barreled down on us, that, that whole idea got, got new meaning. And I think we thought we were good at empathy. We thought we were good at listening. <laughs> and then the pandemic required us to, to really um, find out, you know, how good we were at it. And I, yeah, I remember there was some call, you know, a year ago when the, when the pandemic was really just hitting and, you know, I started some phone call with, as, as one does, you know, you, you pick up the phone or, or video call, whatever it was and say, how you doing? Okay, how are you doing? All right. And then you start to move on and you're like, well, wait a minute. No, that like actually that's a real question now. Like, how yeah. are you really doing? They're like, well, yeah, everything kind of sucks, and yeah, my <laughs> kids are home, and uh, I'm really. And you can have a really substantive, you know, twenty minute conversation about how is everybody really doing. And I think the pandemic has just required us all uh, to listen to each other more, to hear where people are, to acknowledge where they are and to account for that in how we lead and, and how we go about getting the business of our, of our company done. Because I'm sure your business like ours did not slow down, it sped up and we had to accomplish more, not less. One of the things that you have really become an expert on is, is the developer community. And I remember the first time I saw your Ask Your Developer billboard on the 101 as it was coming, coming into town. And I've read your book, Ask Your Developer. One of the things I really enjoyed about reading it, Jeff, is it really sounds like you. It doesn't sound like someone else, you know, someone ghost wrote it or it doesn't sound too technical. It, I mean, I just really felt like I was having a conversation with you when I was reading it. So I just, I think you've done a fantastic job as an author there, but tell us about the origin of Ask Your Developer, how that came to be and what does it mean? What does it mean to Twilio? What does it mean, you know, to the world? You should really be thinking of your developers as partners in building the business. And that's where Ask Your Developer started. So we put up this billboard, just said, Ask Your Developer, it had our name at the bottom. And like ask your developer, there was enough intrigue there that I think it seems like people took note. So, okay, marvelous. But there was this vague hypothesis about what does it really mean to ask your developer that we really didn't get around to fleshing out until I wrote the book. Um, and the book is really this, like, you know, being a, a, a company that serves developers, but as we've moved into the enterprise and, and really wrapped our account, like our, our, our accounts with like relationships that go beyond the developer to business people, product people, finance people, C-suite executives. A conversation I've had a lot with those executives is like, how do we go about building a great developer culture? Like, hey, you're, you know, you're the expert. Like you guys, you, Jeff, you're a developer. You built this company for developers. Can you tell us how do we go about building a company that's going to innovate it's going to unlock the ability of developers. Like, how do we build this culture and this team? Because, you know, the, on the ground, the tactical problem they're having is like, we keep losing our developers to like Facebook and Google. Like, how do we even just keep our developer team here and working on important things? Um, and have having had that conversation so many times, I kind of realized like, look, business people and developers, technical talent, really speak different languages. Um, why don't I try to, to build a bridge? And so I wrote the book really for the business executives to better understand how developers work and what developers value. And, and in some ways, like how to build a culture that embraces the uniqueness of software developer talent and methodologies in order to do what most business executives want today is to like build great digital products and win in this digital economy. Mm -hmm.